Yeah. Not sure how I get my lucky uh, honor of being the last speaker, but uh, <laughs> here we are. Um, so my name is Jeff Edwards. I'm uh, one of the five watch commanders for the sheriff's office. Uh, I work Sunday through Wednesday in the evening hours. Um, there's 24 hour coverage for watch commanders. Essentially, we run the entire operation of the sheriff's department during the nighttime when uh, our executive staff is at home. So um, I'm not going to talk at you for the next 10 minutes. I'm going to give you a few stats just for the last 90 days here in the, in the area. Um, and then just talk a little bit about our social media uh, platform. How you can, oh, I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, cover the social media platforms that we're using currently to stay in communication with you and then open it up to questions because uh, I find that that usually is the most informative way to, to have this conversation. So, um, Over the last 90 days, just to give you a quick snapshot, Marinwood is a fairly safe community. Not a lot of crime, obviously, which is why y'all live here. Um, to note, over the last 90 days, there's only been uh, three auto burglaries that we've had here in the neighborhood, which is actually a pretty good uh, ratio compared to the rest of the county. Um, that's probably one of our number one crimes in the county itself is property crimes, and usually it's crimes of opportunity, uh, people that leave their cars unlocked at night, uh, windows down, things of that nature. Uh, we've had a few of those as well, uh, just two in the last 90 days in this neighborhood. Um, we've also had two uh, residential or home burglaries, um, and those actually were both at St. Vincent's uh, over across the highway. So we haven't had, actually had a home burglary here in, in Marino for 90 days or, or more. Um, as far as citations, I know a uh, uh, form of contention we had for a while was the overnight parking on um, over by the market and on the overpass. Uh, I'm happy to say with the supervisor's help that we uh, have only had to issue one citation for that violation over the last 90 days. Um, in comparison to some of the other areas in the county, that's a fantastic rate. Uh, we seem to be solving the issue uh, with some of the ordinances that have been passed. So um, it's, it's been a really a, a great relief, I think, to everybody, uh, including ourselves. So um, with that, the other thing I'd like to talk about is the like, sheriff's office is doing a great job. <laughs> important, especially with the topic that you all have been talking about mostly tonight, is how we stay in communication with you. Uh, obviously, um, today's environment, social media is a, is a big thing, and it's kind of the most common platform. Um, for those of you that aren't on social media, um, I believe somebody else brought it up already once before, was the Alert Marin program. Uh, that is the old school reverse 911 system. Uh, it used to be called TENS. Uh, it's now the new updated version of that. So if you have a home phone, some people still have home phones, I know I do. Um, if you go on to alertmarin.org and you register your home phone, and you can also register your cell phone. If in the in case of an emergency such as a fire or an earthquake, something of that nature, and we activate that system, it will call your home phone and it'll call your cell phone. We'll give you just a list of you know, directions, whether it's an evacuation order, uh, it's an evacuation warning. You know, that's typically what you're going to see that, that system used for. It's not going to be an information system telling you, uh, you know, the road's blocked or traffic delays, things of that nature. This is going to be the, the big red handle has been pulled, essentially, and this is the emergency. This is what we want you to do. Either shelter in place, we want you to evacuate, something of that nature. Um, the next one we probably use uh, on occasion and probably most frequently during emergencies such as last year's fire. Um, the fire we recently had about almost two months ago now in Lagunitas is Nixle. Um, several agencies use Nixle in different ways. We at the Sheriff's Office believe that Nixle should be used when it's really needed, and that's gonna be the same manner that Alert Marin is gonna be used in is, we want you to do something. It's either gonna be sheltering in place because there's something going on uh, in the neighborhood, or we want you to leave the neighborhood in the example of a fire for, you know, to use that. Uh, we're not gonna use Nixle typically on a day-to-day -day basis because we don't want it to become something that you see it so often and you start to ignore it. Um, you know, and so we try to use that as, as sparingly as we can when it's really important. The way that we do communicate with you on a pretty regular basis, and we try to do that as much as we can, is through Nextdoor, uh, through Twitter, through Facebook, um, I think we're even starting to dabble with Instagram for uh, those of you that might also be out there. Um, 
Something to know to make uh, on Nextdoor specifically, it's been pretty recent where you've actually been able to click a box that it'll send us a message. Just so y'all are aware, when you have a conversation within your community on Nextdoor, we don't see any of the comments, we don't see the conversation. We only see what you, you write specifically in your message and then click the little box that sends it to us. Any responses thereafter from community members, we actually don't see at the moment. So a lot of times we'll get secondary messages saying, how come you haven't responded to these conversations and the things that are going on? And quite simply, it's because we don't see it. Um, and that's the way that Nextdoor is set up and that's the way that the company is, is purposely set it up. It may change eventually, I kind of hope it does, at least on the ones that were included in. We don't need to read everything that y'all post. Uh, I live here in Miranda, trust me, I see enough stuff on my community's uh, next door postings as well. So um, we really do use Twitter quite a bit, you know, for everyday general uh, communication with everyone, and we do respond to those things, uh, as well as Facebook. So, you know, if you have questions, you have comments, please by all means reach us out, reach out to us on those uh, platforms. Or just call us, you know, and we'll come out and talk to you. We still think that feels cool way too. So, um, yeah. with that, I don't really have much else to give you because, like I said, I don't want to talk at you. If you have any questions, I'd like to open it up for that, and I'd be happy to try to answer them as best I can. Yes, ma'am. Do you have a phone number? There's a car that's been parked in front of my house for two weeks. Is there a phone number I can call that can tell you if you have licenses from out of town? Yes. The phone number is 479 2311. That's our non-emergency number. Yeah. And if you call and just let them know that there's been a car parked in your in front of your house for more than 72 hours, we'll come out and take a look at it. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. Um, Lieutenant Edwards, full disclosure, I'm a Lucas Valley resident, and I'm a little emotional because um, two years ago today, tonight, um, we had the home invasion property. And um, I'm really glad that we stayed here. It's Still really hard for my family, but I would like to know how, what else we can do um, to protect ourselves. And I don't mean me personally, I mean our community. I felt a lot of love from our community in Lucas Valley. Um, I felt really supported, so did my children, but it was rough and I think about it every single day. Luckily my kids are great um, and we've moved on from it for the most part, but I was disappointed not in the Sheriff's Department, but um, I was disappointed that Lucas Valley talked for what felt like a second about doing security cameras in the main entrances to the valley and then that went away because of um, privacy issues and I'm just wondering from the um, standpoint of being a, um, uh, an official entity in our county and in our area what other suggestions you can give us because I sort of feel a little bit like we've drop the ball. I mean, thank God that's not a common thing. Thank God we were the only family and we were fine. And the fact that this, I saw that this meeting was scheduled for this night several months ago and I was like, I have to go to that because, you know, I just, I need to say um, that I appreciate what the Sheriff's Department did for us and what the community has done for us, but I feel like there's more we can do. So I'd love to hear either from you or I'd love to see information disseminated through the Homeowners Association and the, you know, CSC here. Yeah, uh, well first, I'm glad things are better and that uh, you guys are still safe and can moving forward with that. Um, no, it's a great question and, and one of the things I would recommend highly, first of all, is make sure you know who your neighbors are. Um, you know, today's environment, you know, knowing who your neighbors are a lot of times helps resolve issues right from the get-go. If you don't see, you see somebody in the neighborhood that you don't recognize, if you know who your neighbors are, you know, that automatically helps out identify whether or not that person is supposed to be in the neighborhood or not and what, what their business is there. So um, security cameras, security systems, obviously that's, that's widely available now. Um, community watch groups is always a, a great thing. Um, you know, neighborhood watch, you know, I know we don't talk about that too often anymore, and, and you know, that was a, a big thing in the 80s, but uh, in the 90s, but you know, definitely it's still a, a, a great system and it's a very effective one. Um, you know, I think not presenting yourself as a, a, an opportunity, quite frankly, the holidays are coming, you know, quickly on us, upon us now, and, and one of the things to help prevent crimes of opportunity is not to give that opportunity in the first place. Make sure your porch lights are, are, are working and, and uh, your gates are locking. 
Um, you don't need things in your car that are visible at night uh, or even during the daytime. So, um, you know, just a little bit of prevention and a little bit of awareness with each other and in the community itself, I think, goes a long way. So, uh, and by all means, we're always there to come out and help and take a look and see what else we can't find other people help short your house. Yes, sir. Yeah, in regard to attractive wages, wildfire, I know that's a moving target and there are a lot of variables, wind direction and whatever, but that's usually designated for the police and not the firemen. And so what is your answer as far as a, a resident would be notified on which direction of an evacuation route he should take? Well, the county has established a mutual threat zone plan uh, and we actually put it into play two months ago in Lagunitas when we actually did evacuation. We have one for the whole route. Um, so there are designated areas if we, are to, uh, if we were to order evacuations from the Lucas Valley and the Wernwood area, we have designated uh, uh, evacuation centers, uh, locations that are established. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't think of them right now, but. Um, but it's all fire yeah. dependent. Where yeah. the fire is at, where it's going. Right. And, and if something was to change during a fire, uh, such as when in the fire direction, and we, we actually dealt with this in Mogadidas uh, two months ago, uh, we would actually have to <coughs> Instead, if it wasn't near a community center, we changed it to say, you know, Smith Ranch and Guinness Park. You know, we would update that as, as best but we that could. that update is that through Nextel or Alert Marin? That would probably come through Nextel and/or Alert Marin directly. 